Surat, with a population of nearly 4 million, is the ninth largest city in India. And it's proving that to prepare for floods does not have to be high-tech or expensive. Flooding has long been a fact of life in Surat. It's such a regular event, each of the city's districts has two rescue boats. They're flat-bottomed, so they skim easily across the water, missing obstacles just below the surface. As Surat has had floods 15 to 20 feet deep, this could mean a house is under the boat. The floods are caused when monsoon rains swell the river Tuppy, running through the city and the surrounding tidal creeks. Many people have drowned over the years. This rescue mission is just an exercise. Every year before the monsoon rains arrive, rescue teams practice their techniques. But it's not just river flooding that threatens Sudha. Houses have been abandoned as the sea moves inland due to coastal erosion. The city faces a pincer movement because flooding also comes from inland. 94 kilometers away is the Ukai Dam. It was built in the 1970s to protect the city from flooding, to provide water for irrigation and generate electricity. The dam fills with water during the rainy season, which can be released to prevent drought in the dry season. But due to climate change, the dam is filling unpredictably. And when that water is released, it poses a serious threat. Under the changed climate scenario, uh, the, temp uh, the rainfall is likely to increase, uh, dominated by extreme events. If any one of these extreme events happen during the end of the rainy season, when the dam is full, the dam will not be able to protect Surat. When the dam is too full, the water has to be released, and within six hours, floods Surat. In 2006, unexpected downpours at the end of the rainy season meant the dam water had to be released with very little warning, but with drastic consequences. The water was 15 to 20 feet deep, and slums close to the river, like this one, were almost completely submerged. Up to 14,000 families live close to the river bank. The municipal commissioner is responsible for the welfare of the slum dwellers. One shows her how high the water reached. They were saying that in the last floods, the entire uh, house was uh, in a, uh, submerged and the floods before that that was about four years ago it was about like half the height of the house that was submerged but it's not just exceptional floods that affect this slum every year when there are floods this area is inundated and there's about uh, water to the depth of two feet or so which is a great uh, hardship for the people living here and water also enters into their houses so they have to be evacuated and taken to relief camps these floods are a disaster for the economy, as well as individuals. Surat's also known as the city of diamonds and silk. The diamond industry here is worth $14 billion. 65% of the world's diamonds are polished here. The 2006 flood cost the diamond industry $2 billion. Because of flood, mainly the workers who are staying in a low-lying area. Their houses were totally washed away. And because of that, they could not report to their job. Surat has virtually no unemployment. A million people, a quarter of the population, work in the diamond industry. Although the floods only lasted four or five days, business in the city closed down for up to 60 days while workers struggled to repair their homes. Closures also devastated the textile business. 70% of the looms had to be replaced. At this diamond factory, one very practical adaptation was in place. 
મોંઘી મશીનરી જે છે કોસ્ટલી મશીનરી એ બધીને ઉપર રાખવી and there are plans to make sure that in the future machines are not so vulnerable we have you know like a submersible units the machines you know like do not get affected the motors do not get affected so this kind of technology should be brought into the city but the most important change is making sure workers have houses that will survive heavy flooding so that the city doesn't have to close down for so long This family moved to Surat from 200 kilometers away. Over 20 years, they have continued to make improvements to their house. Aisa malum nahi tha pehle idhar baad aata hai, aisa malum nahi tha. Lekin wo 88 mein hum jab idhar aaye na, to 2 saal ke baad baad chalu ho gaya. To jab pani aata tha to pura saman hamara bah jata tha. Aisa koi aata paata, pani sab bigad jata hai. Kaam danda bhi jata hai, bimar padte hai. तो साफ सफाई में इसमें बहुत तकलीफ मतलब एक महीना तो ऐसा ही निकल जाता है द फैमिली डजेंट वांट टू मूव टू अ सेफर एरिया फर्दर अवे बीइंग क्लोज टू वर्क इज अ प्रायोरिटी सो एडैप्टिंग देयर एग्जिस्टिंग हाउस इज एसेंशियल एट फर्स्ट इट वाज सिंपल थिंग्स लाइक हाई शेल्फ्स ऐसे अमूल्य अगर पैसा डागी ना हो तो उसको कहीं ऊपर के साइड में रखना पड़ता है ऊपर कोई है वो अपनी पर्दी बनाया है या अबराई में अबराई अबराई वो ऐसी जगह में हम रख देते हैं उसको The family raised the level of their floor several times When they could afford it added another story Flood levels are marked all over the city No one escapes so people are doing their best to adapt Shops have raised fronts Street lamps have their electrical supply box fixed well above high water levels. This slum has been raised up. And these old houses each have a high plinth. And in newer houses, the ground floor is kept empty. Weep holes all over the city help with drainage. Even the rich are at the mercy of flooding and have high plinths and weep holes to protect themselves. Surat is also adapting other aspects of its infrastructure. The fresh water supply is at risk during flooding, but it's been designed so clean water can easily be rerouted if any of the processing or distribution plants go down. As a result, the 2006 flood caused much less disease than expected. This sewage treatment plant has been constructed to keep working through a flood. It's powered by biogas, which is gas produced from the sewage itself. It means even if the power supply is cut in a flood, the sewage can still be processed. This plant is cheaper to run and helps reduce CO2 emissions, which in turn help reduce global warming. And Surat has plans for future adaptation. This sign tells the people what level the water is at in the dam. But those managing the dam need more accurate weather predictions so they can release the water in the dam over a slower period. Surat will uh, require uh, extensive use of IT to actually predict, uh, provide early warning systems and manage the events better. The Indian government is asking for technological help from the industrialized world. But if scientists are right, the time to make these adaptations may be running out. Increasingly, the scientific monitoring of the Earth's surface is throwing up this evidence that climate change is occurring now, that it's occurring faster than we thought, that it's going to accelerate faster than we previously thought in in the future, and that large numbers of people maybe being affected now and that number will become very large in the in the next few decades not the next few centuries the speed of change put cities all over the world at risk even existing flood structures like london's thames barrier could become obsolete well the un thinks that adaptation will cost about 100 billion dollars a year by 2030 I and several others think that that's an underestimate, perhaps two or three times too low. 
But this Thames barrage alone would cost a billion dollars to replace. It is already too late to save some places from damage caused by climate change. Some estimates are in the order of one-third to two-thirds of the total global impact is something it would not be worth adapting to. Even if we could, it would cost too much. It would make more sense to pull out. Shanghai is built on a river delta close to the sea, and water levels have already risen nearly 12 centimetres in the last 30 years. A rise in sea level of only a few feet would put a lot of Shanghai underwater. An estimated $800 million is being spent raising 1,000 kilometres of sea and river dikes by about two metres, so the average height is now nine metres. 